The false alert triggered fear and confusion that to this day is not easily forgotten. And what about trust? Nikki Schenfeld spoke with residents to hear their stories and if they would trust another alert. For those who received this message at 8.07 a.m. on January 13th, 2018, many won't forget where they were or what they were doing. It was kind of just shocking and everybody was dumbfounded. We were at a loss for words. I didn't know what to do. While some said goodbye to loved ones. I started writing messages to my brothers and sisters, essentially to say, you know, I love you, goodbye. <laughs> Others started prepping. First reaction was fill up the tubs with water, start closing down the house. You know, um, if we survive the blast, then we might be able to, you know, maybe survive the radiation fallout. I asked what they would do if the alert happened again. And if I'm home, I'll hide in the bathroom. If I'm outside, like last time, I don't know what I will do. Yeah. I'm not prepared. I don't have a plan. I don't even know where a fallout shelter is. And even if I was trying to get to one, there's no way I could make it there in time. One year later, and many people still don't know what they would do or where they would go. Some tell me that they do have emergency kits, but if another alert were sent out, would they believe it? Yes, I would, but then I think, I don't know, hard to believe, hard to say. I mean, it, it, it is hard to say because it's a very scary experience. Maybe, maybe not, but still good to be cautious. I would definitely take it seriously. Uh, I don't think the state would make the, the same mistake twice. Now that when it, we realize it's over, I think it was a good learning experience for all of us to hope that the city or state and even the federal government make sure we are prepared for the next time. Mm -hmm. But we'll never know that until it probably happens again. And that is something no one wants. Nikki Schoenfeld, KHON2 News.